on the edge of history presents miracle man he may have been a superior athlete who broke world records and won medals at international track championships but he actually fell short in a race with history he showed a natural athletic talent from the time he was born into an affluent family in melbourne australia while attending the prestigious Geelong Grammar School, which focused on boys' athletics, he tried to become a sprinter. His times just weren't fast enough. And he moved on to Australian rules football, which, despite its quaint name, is brutal, violent, and savage. His 145-pound body just couldn't survive the constant pounding. Throughout all his teenage years, he had only one goal, to be the best at any sport. If he couldn't call himself the best, he didn't want to compete in a sport. And while studying agriculture at Melbourne University, he finally found his sport, cross-country running. He had no ta natural talent at first, but through sheer doggedness, he learned how to run the mile. A quiet intellectual, he forced himself to run what he called the natural race that reflected the human struggle. A man with brains who competed with brawn. He eventually made the state team, gaining the attention of Percy Cerruti, a local coach with an abusive personality. Together, the two became unbeatable. Within four months of training, Saruti had him running a mile in four minutes and 17 seconds. And then he qualified for the Helsinki Olympics, where he would find competition that would push him even harder. Not only did his times improve, he watched and learned from European runners. He even discovered that the running shoes that they wore were significantly lighter and more efficient. So he bought a few pairs. And he returned to Melbourne and began using those ideas about interval training and running style that he absorbed while at the Olympics. When his time started inching toward the four minute mile, the physical and psychological barrier in the running world, people started paying attention to the running of John Landy. When on the first race of the 1952-53 season, Landy ran an amazing four minutes and two seconds. It became the third fastest mile in history. And soon his name was being added to the likes of Swedish runner Gunder Hag, American Wes Santee, and Britain's Roger Bannister, who were each inching closer to breaking the four minute mile. And he continued running, getting closer and closer to breaking the elusive time barrier. Finally, on May 6th, 1954, at Ilfi Road Track, the four minute mile record was finally broken by Roger Bannister, running three minutes and 59 seconds. Undeterred by the news, only six weeks later, at a track meet in Finland, Landy beat that record by a full one second. He had finally broken the five, four minute mile and now held the world record. Just in time for a showdown between Landy and Bannister, the only two men in the running world who had successfully completed the sub four minute mile. At the 1954 Empire Games to be held in Vancouver, Canada in August that year. The worldwide media dubbed it the Miracle Mile. The interest from all over the world, both in athletes and spectators, was like no other track event in history. The focus of the world's media was on the two runners, and they dealt with it in two different ways. Bannister, a very private person, tried to avoid any attention and prepared quietly on his own. Landy, though, was happy to talk to anyone and trained out in public. The two runners were just as different on the track as they were off of it. 
Landy was happy to lead races from the gun, setting a fast pace that normally drained his rivals of energy. Bannister, on the other hand, had the ability to sprint hard at the end of races and sweep past his opponents. With 35,000 people crammed into the Empire Stadium on that August day and millions more watching on TV or listening on the radio, the two men were ready to take each other on. From the opening gun, Landy followed his plan, leading all the way. And by the third lap, it became a two-man race with Bannister still 15 yards behind him. In the final turn, Landy glanced over his left shoulder, as chance would have it, to check for Bannister, who had already started making his move on the right. Bannister crossed the finish line with Landy right behind him, both running under four minutes. Once it seemed impossible that anyone could run a mile in under four minutes. Now, in this one race, two men did it. Following the historic race, Landy retired from running and took a teaching position at his former grammar school in Geelong. Two years later, when the Melbourne Olympics requested that he act as an ambassador, he accepted the challenge to run races in the United States to generate interest in the Games. Back in training shape, he eventually qualified for the Melbourne Olympics and won a bronze medal in the 1500 meter. Later in life, he successfully ran as the governor of Victoria. John Landy may have finished second in the historic race of the century, but his dignity, courage, and sportsmanship made him an undisputed champion. He lived an ordinary life before history gave him a supporting role in an extraordinary event. <laughs>